Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living burger boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so that we can keep on climbing even higher, the 1200 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought I'd never see the day. Uh, I saw this on MCOL40's channel. I don't know what kind of top eight it is, whether it's a regional, locals, what have you, but regardless, I think it's worth talking about because the concept is there. Hungry Burger with its lettuce and all got top eight at some sort of event. I'm hoping it's like some sort of regional and not just like a four-man local. <laughs> um, but this was given to MCO40 by, I guess, one of his subscribers or something. Uh, and it got top eight. I'm, again, I'm assuming it's a regional. I'm hoping it's a regional because it looks like this is built to be like a regional level deck. Um, basically, just a 15-card side for going second, uh, more or less. I mean, you could argue the Lancey and the Vanities Ruler and the Cosmic Cyclones could be first or second, depending on the matchup. Uh, but regardless, I wanted to talk about this deck because the concepts that this deck has to pull from is very interesting and it's very combo heavy and has a lot of two card combos, potentially one with Diviner of the Herald, but we're going to talk about that because... I don't think this card is as good as I originally thought in this deck, unless there's just something here that I'm not seeing. Also, I'm not going to you know, put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you. I don't know how the hell to play this deck. I've tried playtesting this deck like literally 10 different occasions because I want it to be a deck that I can play competently and like pants people, similar to what I did with like purely Sprite. Um, but this deck is just so complicated. It's basically Drytron, but with a burger like cosplay so i also do feel like that maybe drytron is just a bit better because it's drytron and they have a ritual monster that makes the opponent skip their main phase which i still think is disgusting um but maybe y'all can let me know in the comments below what some of the combo lines are with this deck i've tried pulling up combos with this deck like on youtube and it's like all of these like combos that are like just all depending on the board state, which I mean, you could say the same thing about something with like Sprite Purely, but the thing is with Sprite Purely, I knew that my end board was going to be at least like four or five interruptions. Whereas with this, you don't really know what you're going to get. Plus it's kind of hard to tell how you can even go first with this deck because it's like, what, do you end on one of the low level rituals, hope to make a Baron and pass? Like that's not terrible. But anyway, I'm going to shut up and go on into the deck profile. We're playing two copies of Fenrir. I mean, really, two is not terrible. I mean, you'd be playing a 44-card deck if you played three. You can make the argument that since you're playing a ritual deck, you could maybe get away with three and play a 44 main. But uh, this player opted to go with two, which is fine. Um, a lot of people opt between two or three. Uh, we're playing one copy of Incantation Salamander with two Candle, and then the one of Saki Tama for the extra normal summon. So if you hard open this and use Diviner to dump Arclight, you can make Baron. Um, we're going to talk about more about that in a sec. Uh, three Ash. Three Diviner, uh, one Chalice Slime, one Bay Grill, one Very Hungry Burger, uh, 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 one Ben 10, two of the Balluminier, uh, one Foy Gras, one Poletus, one Confirus, and then uh, two copies of the Baralabalabalabalaz. <laughs> so here's the thing with Diviner in this deck. Uh, the tributing to summon a level 2 or lower fairy other than itself is literally not possible because you don't have a level 2 or lower fairy in the deck. And the issue with making Baron, which that's why I don't know like how this dude made fucking Baron outside of hard opening Sakitama or like maybe somehow searching it because it's a level four fairy. It's like you can search it off of the Ben 10. But in order to make Baron, you have to go summon Diviner, dump the Arc Light, get a search and like summon out Sakitama because Kandal is a level four, but it literally says you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. So unless this dude wasted the Forbidden Chalice as a resource to negate his own Kandal, to like make a baron then like yeah that's a line but like you're committing uh, in theory one two three cards like why are you going to waste your chalice negating your own candle just to make a baron that doesn't seem worth it to me again like maybe there's something i'm missing here like i guess because like this is level seven if you can make this like a level three and dump a level one i guess like can't you have to send a fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to the grave so you don't have a level one fairy in your deck and you don't have a level one in your extra deck. So yeah, no, you can't even use, <laughs> you can't even use fucking Fenrir as an option. So yeah, the only way I see that you can make Baron in this is like with Sakitama plus Diviner. That seems really rough, to be honest. Uh, next up, we're playing three copies of pre-prep uh, pre of rights with three preparation of rights. Three of the Voita La Carte, today's menu. <laughs> and then we're playing uh, one of the meat recipe and then two of the fish recipe. Um, only three ritual spells, which I think is really interesting. But you can also recur them back from the graveyard. So with either your rights package or like 
with one of the ritual spells themselves, or even with the field spell. Uh, which, speaking of which, three of the table, one of the chef's special uh, Infernity Barrier Trap, with two Book of Moon and two Chalice, uh, interruptions are really good this format. You know, being able to end on a bunch of rituals with, like, Book of Moons and Chalices in your back row seems pretty good. Plus, like I said, the trap card's a fucking Infernity Barrier, which is really funny. Uh, for the extra deck, we're playing a bunch of Super Poly targets, because we set it three Super Polys. So, uh, one Starving Venom, one Dragos Capellia, one of the Garua, uh, Ints, just for the dump off the Diviner, and then one Mud Dragon. And then along with one Chaos Angel, one Baron, one Excel Synchro with two Arc Light, one Underworld Goddess, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Cross Sheep, one Anima, and then one copy of the Dynamondo. So, it's two monsters, including a Ritual. Uh, if it's Special Summon, you can target a card on the field and one Ritual monster in your graveyard. Shuffle both into the deck, and then during your opponent's turn, Quick Effect, you contribute this card. Target one Ritual monster in your graveyard, uh, either add it to your hand or special summon it. You can only use each effect once per turn. Remember that these new velas, ritual monsters, say that when they're special summoned. So even if you special summon like one new velas off of another new velas, it's still going to get the effect of when it's special summoned. Same goes for the Dynamondo because you're just special summoning rich the ritual monster. You do you do still have to properly um, summon it, I believe. So like you have to use like one of the recipe ritual spells to first summon one then get it out with dynamondo i'm pretty sure that's how that works um let me know if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's how that works uh side deck we're playing two lava one vanity's ruler and one lancia double lightning storm triple cosmic triple super poly and then three copies of evenly matched um so thoughts on the side i mean vanity's ruler i mean you could argue going first or second probably more for going first because like if you're playing this going second and the opponent just builds a board it's kind of pointless uh it's also a fairy and it's a light, and it's also 2,500, and only locks your opponent out of special summoning. So with it being a fairy, you, I guess, kind of have some uh, way to search it. Well, I mean, you could search it also off of the Ben 10, which is actually really good. Uh, of course, Lancia being a light fairy, you can search that off Ben 10. Um, so yeah, really, your only going first card, arguably, is Ruler, unless you want to count Cosmic or Super Poly as going first or second. Super Poly being really great going first or second to help you crack boards, and the opponent can't respond to it. Um, I would have loved to know what this dude's mashups were. Hopefully he'll see this video and like we can interview him or something and he can kind of teach us how the fuck to play this deck. Because like the decking concept seems so cool. Like <laughs> being able to go for Bay Grill, tribute the opponent's monsters and just sit on a hungry burger and be like, hey bro, are you on a low carb diet? If not, your ass is going to get beat by a big old burger. Let's go ahead and shuffle up some hands here real quick. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Opening up Ash is never a bad thing. You've got the today's menu and the rights and the pre-prep. So you have all of the search power here. Like you're guaranteed a ritual monster and basically a ritual spell off of this card. And then you're going to get two more searches off of both of these. And you opened up uh, Poletas de, de Novelas. Again, though, I don't know the lines with this deck. So this seems really good, but it also seems kind of meh because it's like, I don't know how to even play this out. Now, what is cool is that if you are able to get to the Baron by, you know, summon number five, you are able to be insulated from Nibiru because, I mean, really this deck doesn't have any sort of out to Nibiru other than like, you know, Baron. Um, this deck, yeah, it hard loses to Droll, which I'm seeing some decks now topping, like, some of the WCQs around the world, side decking Droll, so even though Droll isn't necessarily being main deck anymore, it's still seeing some side deck play, and of course Dimension Shifter just shuts this deck down like it's nobody's business. I feel like that this deck basically just loses to anything that Drytron loses to, because if you think about it, I mean, really, if you're going into, like, a regional, are you going to play this or are you going to play Drytron? You may play this, like, for the pantsing factor, because if the opponent doesn't know what your cards do, that's going to put you at an advantage. But then also, too, if you want, like, the consistency, if you want, I'm pretty sure Drytron has one-card combos. If you want the one-card combos of Drytron, you're probably going to go with Drytron, you know, you're playing a ritual deck. Like, you're inherently going to lose to the same things that, like, any other ritual deck loses to, whether it's D-Shifter, Droll, what have you. I mean, you saw just in that one opening hand how much searching we can do. D-Shifter just ends our day. It doesn't even end our turn. It just ends our whole match career, ladies and gentlemen. So, regardless, though, I think that this deck is really cool. If you want something cheap just to play at Locals, I mean, you could very easily copy this deck card for card and see success. It's just a matter of, you know, if you go up against like a D shifter, like you've got to have not even an out for it because I mean, this is 43 cards. So like, you're not going to play the one of Call by the Grave and you're not going to play Cross Out Desert Air because Cross Out Desert Air is inherently inconsistent. So you're not going to play that to make the deck even worse. But I definitely don't feel like that this deck is garbage. There's definitely something here. And remember that we're getting the Pastille Coverture support out of, uh, I believe, Age of Overlord. Yeah, Age of Overlord. 
so we will get like basically a couple new cards of support i don't really think that that's going to push the deck much higher than i would say like rogue status this definitely isn't tier two it has the potential to be tier two if it's piloted correctly and if the format is able to be kind to it you know like no d shifters no drolls things like that um i feel like if you wanted to play this deck competitively i feel like if you're seeing drytron see success then this deck could see success because it's another ritual deck that just basically has different lines compared to Drytron. You know, you don't have a ritual monster that says skip the main phase, but yeah, you're going to tribute a bunch of the opponent's monsters. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.